The historic event wasn't the result of a deliberate act, but the impact it left was indelible. January 10, 1967 was a day that changed the course of Bahamian history as politicians in a strategic political maneuver finally gained the recognition and benefits the majority demanded. Tonight, Shanique Miller rel relives some of the events of that era according to the relatives of the man who came to be known as the father of labor in the Bahamas. It has turned out to be the most polarizing day. You have the FNM party on one hand. To me, it looks like they want to deny it ever happened. You have the Progressive Liberal Party. They want to use it for political propaganda. Calling it like she sees it, 45 years after majority rule, Rosalie Fox remains committed to the main idea that helped usher in majority rule, a passion that fueled her father. A simple premise, yet one that's empowering. Unions are to remain the main proponents of workers' rights. It was that belief that made Sarando the father of labor in the Bahamas. Sarando Fox led the movement for Bahamians to have equal opportunities in the workplace since 1955. And that was when he first got involved in trade unions. His widow, Jacqueline Lady Fox, remembers her husband becoming passionate about workers' rights soon after the Burma Road riots of 1942, where nine people lost their lives. There were the uh, Bahamian workers, and there were also the um, American workers. The American workers were paid much more money for doing the same work. And uh, that's part of the, the riot. This is why the trade union movements, they have to recognize the role of the working man in bringing about change in this country. This was not a struggle that was just accomplished by the power elite. Daddy never joined the Progressive Liberal Party, neither did Sir Alvin. It was a PLP Labour coalition government. But Sir Randall ran and won on the PLP's ticket in 1956. Two years later, 1958, they say it would be his Bahamas Federation of Labor Unions that would cause the 19-day general strike of 1958 to be tremendously successful. David Fox recalls the backlash was stinging. Many persons, after they had participated in the general strike, actually lost their jobs. By 1967, Sarando was an independent, pushing the agenda of the workers. In the elections of that year, the UBP and PLP each won 18 seats. A majority had to be reached. So the only logical thing to do was convince one of the two independent members of parliament to join either party. The PLP won when it convinced Randall Fox, the Labour member of parliament, to join the party. Alvin Brainin remained independent. Even then, Fox remained true to his passion that workers be given the rights and freedoms they deserved. He often referred to himself as a one-man band. The Fox family echoed the general sentiment being expressed all around. Bahamians must do a better job at telling and documenting our history. Rosalie says it will have to be a full-time job. The government has got to set aside a dedicated ministry that will work on this. Like Sarando, the Fox family hope to one day have trade unions resume their place on the national stage and commit themselves to really doing what majority rule started out as, a fight for workers. Where is the major in, uh, a rehabilitation of those least able to help themselves? The Fox family say this is the real story of majority rule day, and the story cannot be told partially. Forty-five years later, the first family of labor say, while black Bahamians are the majority, they remain the minority when it comes to equal economic opportunities. Shanique Miller, ZNS News.